Okay, so welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can generate procedural cardboard inside Houdini. Okay, so before we jump into Houdini, we're going to take a look at how the theory behind this. Um, now, if I just select this pen tool, I'm just going to draw a straight line. Now, you can imagine we're just creating a line in Houdini, okay? Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to resample that line. So this simply illustrates a line created in Houdini which is resampled to so many points okay um, and what we want to do is we want to create that corrugated effect now there's a few different ways that we can do that um, but one of the ways I found was the easiest and the most controllable was to use the modulo effect um, and essentially what modulo does is it's going to just allow you to select like every nth point so we could select every second point every third point on here um, but for this I want to select every second point so and then put all those points into a group so let's just say we're going to run we're going to use an attribute wrangle and we're going to look at each one of the points iterate it over each one of the points and say okay let's just put this point into a group this point into a group this one into a group and this one into a group once those are into a group we're then going to generate normals from the surface and the normal is going to point away from the surface okay uh, and then we can multiply the normal by the point position so we can then do something like this where we're offsetting the every other point and creating this kind of corrugated pattern effect okay so that's the basis um, for which is going to form everything really um, once we've done that we can look at how we can then automate thickness to this uh, we can also look at then how we can cover the surface so we'll just obviously we'll cover the top of the surface We'll cover the bottom of the surface just like this and then we also need to consider the thicknesses of the out surface the thickness this has been extruded uh, the way this is going to be positioned and the thickness of that as well so just to make sure that nothing is intersecting everything's working procedurally okay so i'm just going to jump inside houdini i'm just going to hit tab here and type in grid because we're going to do this on just a basic example so just drop this down just make sure you got points visible just so you can see the points uh, and we'll switch on point numbers as well just so you can um, identify like how the numbers work in a regular way and we'll just rotate it around just so you can see zero from this side and nine on here and you can see all the points are offsetting there's 10 points uh, and they're offsetting by 10 each time it goes back okay so you know so every if you imagine every even number so you know odd number uh, even number odd number even number uh, and that's the same on every line as well okay so the modulo function should work fine for a regular grid so we're just going to jump inside here uh, and what we're going to do is the first thing we need to do we need to add the point normals normals onto this so let's just hit tab type in normal drop this down change those from vertices to point normals okay and you can see the point normals been added here and what we're going to do is we're going to add an attribute wrangle so if you hit tab again aw for attribute wrangle shift enter and then go inside here um, and uh, i'm just going to type this out and i'll explain how it works in a second so if at pt num modulo 2 double equals to zero open brackets Okay, so we've got this in place. So we've got this conditional statement. So essentially what this is doing is this is saying if PT num, which is the point number. So if the point number, which is this, modulo two, so it has a remainder of a zero um, based on every second point. Now, so this is a little hard to explain, but if you type in modulo on the internet, there's lots of visual examples that show you how this works. Okay, so, uh, but the only important thing you need to remember, remember is this number here will determine every nth point. So if this is two, it'll be every second point that's put in the group. If it's three, every third point that's put in the group and so on, okay? And just need to make sure this is use a double equals and that's set to zero, okay? So anything, so, you know, if this condition's met, meaning that it's every second point, um, we'll put those points into a group uh, and we'll do that by using at group underscore let me just uh, case that 
type group okay underscore now whatever we put after the underscore will be the name of the group and we'll call this offset so this group is called offset and we need to make that equal to one okay just like this uh, and you can see now when I click off it's going to create a new group and you can see every second point is put into a group here so you know every one every second point and that's important because we're going to use that group on this next wrangle so let's just name this offset uh, so set group set group create a new attribute wrangle Oop, wrong thing shouldn't have done that uh, click in hit this window create an attribute wrangle okay we'll call that um, set offset jump inside here and remember we only want to run over the offset group so we only want to execute this code on every second point uh, and we'll do that by let's just jump and explain to you how this works okay so in designer we've got this so let's just move this one and this one out of the way okay so this is a point this can be any point and let's just say this is point zero okay uh, and each one of these points has its own vector at p uh, and the vector starts at the origin which is you know zero coordinates and it's essentially just a vector that's pointing and telling this point where it should be in 3d space okay this is on 2d but you get the idea it could be in 3d space okay um so that's where that point is right um Let's move this down just so you can see how that works okay that's that point there what we need to do is we want to find a way of controlling the offset at that point so we need to make the point do this from the surface all right okay uh, and remember we had the normal which is already on here so to find say this point here all we need to do is add this vector to this vector and that will give us a new vector and that new vector will be that position there okay so that's essentially how we're going to get move the point from this position to this position okay so jumping back into Houdini we'll do that so inside here let's just set that so remember at P which is the point position so we've got the point position we're going to add the normal to that and we'll just make sure that works first so we'll click in that and you can see you know every second point has been offset by the normal that was on this okay but it's a bit too high a bit too strong we need to find a way of controlling that uh, and the way that we can do that if we go back to this is okay so essentially you know is we, we've taken this vector we've got this vector but we want to be able to control const control the the magnitude of this vector so how long this vector is if we multiply that vector by 0 0.5 it's going to be this long and it'll put the point there if we multiply that vector by 2 it's going to be double the length and put the point there so you can see the idea that if we multiply by a value it's going to control the offset at that point so if you go back into Houdini we can multiply by a value and essentially that can be a slider so let's just um, multiply by a channel slider so channel float value call that offset oops offset okay um, click off click this button here which will add the UI element just below you see it here now if you drag this you can see how that's working so remember as I explained before if it's offset by by default it's there multiply that by 0 0.5 half the value multiply it by 2 double value and you can see this is a way that you can then control the offset the thickness of the cardboard um, basically so um, you can make this a lot more complex so you could group two points together so you so it's not make creating like a triangle pattern um, you know so you've got like a flat surface at the top then it goes down you have got a bit of a flat surface at the bottom lots of control it just depends on how you know you set the group initially um, so you can you know control that however you like but essentially this this is the foundation of the effect everything else is almost driven from this 
Okay, so you can see here, I've just added this null, just so we can identify this is the mesh, and then this is the offset of the surface, okay? I'm just going to zoom in. Um, you can also see I've put a few more divisions in here, just to make it look a little bit more like cardboard. And um, what I'm going to do is, you know, we need to obviously have a layer for the base, and we also need to have a layer for the top of this, so we need to cover both sides of the surface. And we can set a thickness and we can do all sorts of things really. Um, but let's just add the base in for now. So we'll just merge the original result. So just drop in a merge. And we'll pull in this into here and then the mesh into here. And now you can see, you know, we've got the offset and we've got the base layer. Okay. Um, what needs to do is we need to have the top layer as well. So again, let's just remove the color. Um, what I'm going to do is just use a transform. Okay, so if we transform the mesh, merge it back. And just to visually show you what's happening here, I'm just going to pull this up. So you can see, if it's moved up by a value point like 0 0.5, which should be the same value, offset value here, and we'll just round this up. Let's put, let's put 0 0.5 here. Uh, we'll put 0 0.1 just so it's a little bit lower um, and then um, yeah you can see we're obviously manually offsetting this from the surface but we need to kind of do this procedurally but you get the idea of like how this is working and merging back in so let's just delete this and what we can do is we'll just cut through here as well and we'll copy this offset we'll paste it here remove the connection okay and we'll link this in here select this and just make sure we're not running on the offset group because we want to offset all the points uh, and let's go down yeah this is set to 0 0.1 as before um, so when we link this back in it's aligning with the surface okay um, but to get this working procedurally what we can do is we can copy this parameter so copy that parameter go back to this one paste it in here paste it as relative references Okay, so what that means then is, let's just color this one a different color. Let's color it that. Um, so if we select this, you can see we're controlling the offset of the surface and everything's lining up. <clears throat> now, once you're at this point, you could look at this a couple of different ways. You know, if depending on the distance you're gonna be away from this, this might be fine. You could add, add, so extrude a little bit of thickness, you might be fine with this. Um, so other considerations if we need to be fairly close in then you probably consider having you know two of these points on the base two of them above uh, and just run, running the modulo function that way um and also you know you might want to have a slightly different thickness to the inside as you do to the surface um and just you know making it just a lot more detailed in general but from distance this should be fine those are just some considerations Okay, so here you can see, I've just created a few extra nodes here. Um, I've swapped out the original plane for this pig head, removed the attributes from that, just so it's a basic mesh. Um, it's been subdivided, and um, it has some normals on, which the, you know the mesh had normals on before. Okay, so we've identified this is the out point of the mesh, um, and what I've done is I've set a clip here. So essentially, the clip is just cutting this in half. So you can see how this works on a mesh that's not completely flat and um, it seems to work fine from a distance you know um, and like I said before if um, you need to if you have any problems with intersections then you'll just need to go in and just make sure like just the procedural offsets are in place as well so you know this might need to be offset slightly um, and this section as well just so things are not intersecting each other so because all of this is procedural now, if I go into the, the subdivide, uh, we can reduce this down. You can see it's creating a slightly different effect. So it's less dense inside here. Um, we've got a lot of control over it, obviously, creating the um, over the density of this. Um, we've got control over the thickness. We could set extra controls so we can change the thickness of the different layers if we need to. Um, but, you know, that's working fine for now. Um, what you'll probably need to do is if you want to set a different color for the inside and the outside of this we'll need to do that with materials so you can see okay so if you go down here 
you can see you know we've got three different inputs going into this merge node and um, those three different inputs are the different layers so you've got the inside the outside um, and then the other outside section there okay so the next thing we could take a look at is how do we make this mesh so let's just go back to this point how do we make this mesh um, fold or create seams in it just so we can apply the card to it so naturally if you look at this um, there are probably certain points where we would naturally want to split um, or create flat pieces like you know where we've got the ears and you know the side of the face this is probably going to want to be like a, a triangle piece or a flat piece here and um, one of the ways we can do that is by using the poly reduce okay um, and we'll use the fuse afterwards as well to control you know the look and the style so let's just do that now so we'll just move these out of the way um, hit the tab use a poly reduce okay so we've got a poly reduce here we'll pull this afterwards um, set this in present it to keep or reduce it reduce this now we don't want to we don't want quadded geometry so this is quite a nice effect um, the fact that we can get this really low here so you can see we could have something almost like this splitting um, we could go fairly low um, let's just go back to the end result here so we'll probably want to subdivide this more here or subdivide it actually in a different way so we'll probably subdivide it in a bilinear yeah we'll do it that way okay so subdivide it like this just so we're, you know we're forming these kind of flat edges so this is a good start you know we're getting this faceted look to, you know to the shape um, but we need to see well we probably want to have some splits in it um, and some edges to this so again <clears throat> go down to the poly reduce um, and we're gonna we're gonna make this faceted as well so let's just hit tab use facet here make this unique points okay so you can see it's now splitting the geometry up into sections um, and it's cutting these seams here in between now you want, might want that to look like it is at the moment like per face um, but it'd be nice to have it a little bit random just so we've got a split only in certain places and then some of these actually look like they're folded in as well so it just looks, looks like it's folded on the creases um, so one of the ways that we can do this is after the facet we'll just drop in a fuse and we'll pull in a fuse here and then just adjust it so at the moment it's a little bit strong so let's just pull this down and move the dis the fuse distance okay so so you can see like it's fusing based on the distance but the, the problem we have is on the facet every one of the faces is kind of it's split these are split apart but the problem is like they're, they're split equally so there's no randomness to this so we need to add some randomness to this so let's just um, before the fuse add a mountain stop And this will just give us a little bit of irregularity to this just so when it fuses it's going to fuse in just random places so now you'll see um, if I just click off this it's going to fuse certain points and then you get these really nice splitting areas where it's fused together and you can see it open up in certain points um, this is something you'll need to play with to get the correct look of what you need but if you just kind of play with the parameters of, of the fuse the facet the poly reduce um, and you know the mountain as well just to kind of get the look and the style that you need so if we just move this down all the way to the bottom and we'll just preview the final look you can see we're a little bit closer to um, that style we're going for so you know we've got this kind of we've got some creases going on the edges we could subdivide it even more just to kind of get some harsher edges uh, and also break it up in places that we need to as well so we could have some of these splits here happening in other places just 
you know, like this. But this generally gives you the idea of how you can go about creating, you know, this kind of folded effect on the edge of the cardboard.